Tong here, back again. Unfortunately, Jake won't join us today. He's been feeling a little sick, so he's taking time off, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> I also have an announcement. I have a credit building workshop coming up next next week on Wednesday, 5.30 at our Ada office. And so if you guys want to get more information about credit building, uh, what goes into your credit score, how do you increase your credit score, how long does bad marks last on your credit score, kind of just understanding the whole concept of what a credit is. Uh, we're doing that next week on Wednesday, uh, 5.30 in the office. So come through if you guys are interested in that. Um, ow. And a uh, note about that, we have a credit bit of loan. So if you're to have no credit or need a little bit extra money to help pay off some debt. Uh, we have a credit with a loan of about $300, very small, but it's a 0% interest rate and that helps you build credit over the long term. And then it's determined for a year, so you're paying basically 25 bucks a month uh, for that credit building loan. So just putting that out there if you guys, anybody's interested. But today we will be going over, uh, over Farm Financials Part 2. Um, this uh, courtesy of Jake Yang, of course, can't be here today, but uh, it's all good. We can cover as much as we can. Um, all right. It's not working anymore. So today we're going to go over, uh, dig deeper into the balance sheet, your income statement, or most commonly referred to as profit and loss statement, p &L. and then we're going to take a look at how those two kind of work together, um, and then take a look at break even. That's going to be very important for us to understand, to figure out, you know, when are we ever going to recuperate all the money we spent into our farm business. Um, so first things first is the balance sheet uh, provides information on your assets and liabilities and equity uh, and their relationship to each other at a specific point in time. Uh, it shows your current financial position and you have to divide your balance sheet into current and non-current categories. And so that, that basically means uh, your debt. So your current debt are things that are coming up due pretty soon. Uh, Non-current debts for longer term things, so let's say if you bought uh, farmland and this, and this um, kind of mortgage, that would be non-current because you're not going to pay that off until, you know, 30, 40 years. Uh, but more current debt is maybe like five years out uh, that you might be paying off soon. And so you just want to make sure you list those things. Uh, again, balance sheet is everything that you owe, uh, you own, that you own under your name, your business name, versus everything you owe. So that's all your debt, um, any, any payables that you have to pay somebody uh, would be uh, considered a liability. And so there's an equation that we use for the balance sheet. Uh, so by definition, the balance sheet, you have to keep things balanced. Uh, that means uh, everything should flow nicely from your, from your assets down to your uh, liabilities. And so the, the equation that they have here is that your assets, everything you have, you own, equals your liabilities, how much you owe, plus your equity, what you're worth. And we can discuss your equity uh, later in the next slide. Uh, but basically, this is what you would do to figure out how much you have in assets. And it's basically, you know, what you owe plus what you're worth or how much money you put into your business, which is also considered equity. Um, so you figure that out to get your assets. Uh, this is the basic equation of how to figure out how much you're worth, how much your business is worth, or your equity. Um, so what you have minus what you owe is what, is what you are worth. So all your assets, you know, if you if you own a farm, that would be considered an asset. So you put that up on the line. Um, things like your truck, your value of that truck, um, and then the liabilities, everything, like I said, everything, all your debt, you know. So you just do a simple equation, then you figure out if it's, if it's, if it's a positive number, then your equity, you know, you have equity, but if it's a negative number, that means you owe too much money. Um, 
So equity, owner's equity, or worth, it's all the same thing. It's basically the value of the business uh, belonging to the owners. So that's what the equity is. Um, so every, every time that you put money into your business, that's also considered um, owner's equity. So let's say you're, you're buying things, you put like $1,000 into your, bank, your business bank account, you can consider that as equity. Put that on your balance sheet. Um, just want to make a note of that. Um, so moving on quickly here. I'm going to pass around the balance sheet uh, for us to take a look at. There you go. So, first thing we're going to look at is the top portion, your total assets. Um, it's important to remember that your balance sheet, basically what you would do is that you start from the beginning of the year, how much money do you have in your bank account that year, how much equity do you have at the beginning of the year, and then you would count from the beginning of the year to the current period when you generate this report. Um, so it could, you know, every month you have until, let's say if you want to pull it today, uh, you would, your balance sheet should show February, or January or February, not necessarily much. So we've, we've numbered these uh, numerically to kind of keep it easier. We didn't really want to put any uh, arbitrary numbers on there because it will start to get confusing. We just really want to show you uh, what goes all into your assets. So uh, your cash, that's your owner's equity, how much, uh, however, money, how, however much money you put into your business or however much money you have at the, end, at the beginning of the year, that you would count that as your cash. Uh, so that would be your letter A up here. Uh, accounts receivable, does anybody know what that is? Anybody need a bill and someone hasn't paid yet? Yep, so let's say, you know, I've made a shipment of 50 pounds of potatoes to the Good Acre. I would put that onto my accounts receivable because they're not going to give you a check right away. Maybe they'll issue a check at the end of the month or something. So you want to put that into your accounts receivable until you actually get it, until you actually have the cash on hand, the check, you put it in, but then you would take that out of your accounts receivable and add it to your cash. Uh, same thing with everything, every other bill that uh, people owe you. So that's basically, accounts pay receivable is basically money you are owed. Uh, I had a client uh, that's a construction company. It's really easy to do their math because most of the money that they have is accounts receivable. They don't get paid up front for the work that they do, they get reimbursed for it. And so you have a really high accounts receivable, maybe not so much cash, but you know that in a certain amount of time you can get those money into your bank account. Um, there's some issues with that, you know, sometimes you need to pay people up front to do the work so that you can get paid. And so you would have to cover that other ways. Uh, you know, getting a bank loan or a line of credit, something like that. And that will go in, that gets into cash flow sort of things, and we'll talk about that later in the presentation. Uh, just want to make sure you guys understand what accounts receivable is. Uh, inventory, basically everything you have uh, that you're gonna be selling. So if you have thousand pounds of potatoes sitting in the good acre over here, you would count the value of that and put that into your inventory. Um, yeah, same with like, if you had the boxes for that, how much is that worth? Uh, basically everything that you would need to be able to sell your product would go into your inventory. Um, and then prepaid expenses, not to totally sure on what that would be or an example of that would be. Does anybody know uh, about prepaid expenses? Uh, that's fine. Uh, no, because that would be a liability. Um, yeah, so fortunate Jay Scott here, I couldn't ask him about that. But basically, your assets would be all of these things. You would add them all up, obviously. Uh, and then down here, your assets are non care assets at cost. I'm assuming that's things that are um, long term. So, like, 
like I said, like maybe your farm or you would put into your non current assets and costs, and then you would depreciate things and add that to your assets. And so, like if you had a truck or um, some sort of equipment, a lot of times there's a depreciation. There's, I think there's like federal standards on um, depreciation, so it'll show you how, how long equipment or a truck or whatever is supposed to last, and then you can tell how long it's going to last and then how the value is going to go down. So every year you want to take that with the value that it's going to lose um, and put that here in G. And so land, oh yeah, this whole section here for land. Um, so this equation, as you can see on here, this F minus G, so your non-current assets minus the depreciation plus H, your land equals I, which is your not net non-current assets. And so to find total assets, you would just add these two uh, together to find your, uh, your final, your total assets. And so we wanted to talk about a little bit about liquidity, liquidity, liquidity on, on this slide. Um, obviously, cash is king. Cash is the most liquid, meaning that you're able to uh, use that money right away. You're not waiting for that to come in, or it's not, it's not hung up on different assets. Um, yeah, so cash is the most liquid. Um, that also means accounts receivable is, is considered an asset, but it's not liquid, right? So you have this amount of money that's coming, gonna come in. You still wanna count that on your balance sheet because you know it's gonna come in, but you, it's not liquid, you can't use it yet. Uh, so just want to note that out. Uh, another thing, uh, it's, more per, it's more on the personal finance side, but uh, CDs, um, what are they, CD bank accounts, uh, cash deposit bank, bank accounts, those can be liquid as well. I uh, just want to give you guys an example of that. And so, um, the idea is that you want to have good cash flow so that you know when you're going to have uh, the liquid cash, right? So if your cash flow isn't working well, and we'll explain cash flow a little bit, but is it, if it doesn't line up with your, if your balance sheet doesn't really line up with your cash flow, then you won't have the money to pay for labor or pay for expenses that you need in that current month. Mm -hmm. That's a question that this is the balance sheet is something for like an annual report. Um, you should I would suggest that you try to do this every month uh, because when you generate a cash flow is from, you're looking from the beginning of the year to the current time. And so I would say every, every month, try to put everything together in the balance sheet just so that you have an idea of how much, uh, how much you owe and you own at the end of the month, especially updating your accounts receivable and payables. Uh, just doing that every month would help you give a better financial picture of your business. Any other questions? All right. Um, so now we're moving down to the liabilities section, just the second portion of this. Um, accounts payable, there's things that you need to pay people, so like, um, I'm thinking like, if you had a contract with somebody that you needed to pay them eventually, you would put that down in your accounts payable because you know you owe that money, it's gonna be due, coming up due um, in that current month or the next month. Um, crude expenses, current portion of debt, so that's like if you had a loan, you wanna put how much you owe in that month, in this, in, in, in my M right here. Income taxes payable, um, there's gonna be some special way to figure that out, I'm not really sure how. You would want to talk to a tax accountant to get that kind of information from them. Or, um, and so all of those things are basically everything that you would owe that you would need to pay somebody. So you add that all up to get your current liabilities. Non-current liabilities, uh, same thing. Uh, there's, a section, there's a whole line just for land debt, but there are other you know, like non-current liabilities, like long-term debt that you would have. So let's say for some reason you built a walking cooler in your farm or nearby you know, you're not gonna pay that off in five years, right? It might be, take longer than that. So you would put that amount here, how much you owe that month. Um, 
And so once you get all that, once you do all your, uh, your assets, you figure out how much you own, how much money you have in the bank, uh, and then you would subtract from that your liabilities. And so once you do that, you figure out your, your equity, how much your net worth is, um, or how much, yeah, how much your business is worth. Um, and so yeah, that gives you the owner's equity. Um, so you said the total liability is only what you owe that month, not the total of... Yeah, sorry. Um, I think you want to do it... Yeah, I, th I think you want to do it for the whole year, sorry. You want to do it for the whole year. But just for the year, mm -hmm. not for like, like if I owe 5000 on a cooler, I pay $100 a month. Yep, then you would. I would put, put 1200 not 5000 Yeah, yeah, so you would put 12000 because you owe 12000 a year, so every, every month you're paying $100, so you would put 12000 in the beginning of the year, right? So every month that, that number should be going down because you're paying, you know, you're paying every month. So like by now it should be uh, nine hundred, right? And then next month your li your liability would be uh, eight hundred. Can you get that? But you know you would normally you would generate it for the whole year. So if you generate it this year, your liability would be nine hundred. Get it? Um, so let's do the example. So if my um, cooler costs five thousand mm -hmm. and I pay one hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. what would I put? So you would put twelve twelve hundred in the beginning of the year. Uh, um, I put that under. Uh, you put that under uh, current portion of debt. Okay. Yep. Twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. And then the non-current one. Then I where do I put like the whole? The whole five. I don't really put that. Yeah, because I think I'm thinking if you own that, if you got bought the cooler is worth five thousand mm dollars, -hmm. you would put that as an asset because you could sell that for for a price and you would depreciate it. Okay. Right? So I'm just putting what I owe for that year. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Just for the year. Uh, yeah. So Another thing about owner's equity is that at the end of the year, you'll have a certain amount left over. Uh, and that's the kind of cash that you want to use for working capital. Um, so yeah, the money amount left over after you subtract current liabilities from current assets, it's the amount of money you have to work with, right? Because it's the cash that's in your bank account. You can pay for people to sell your land, pay people to come help pick uh, your, your vegetables, uh, or just do things with your farm. Uh, so. You know, again, everything in your current asset, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses, uh, minus your liabilities, as your current working capital, equity, working capital, kind of same thing. Um, yep. So, we'll move on to the income statement, which should be the next side, or the next page. Um, the income statement, also called profit and loss statement. Uh, basically, uh, this is to understand how, uh, how to read your, your numbers and how it flows. Uh, helps you understand your bottom line numbers, whether you're making a profit or a loss. Um, so as you can see, uh, the income statement is kind of lined up here. Uh, we just want to look at your net income. So you're looking at your cash receipts, how much cash you have that you've made. Uh, Non-cash, um, I'm thinking that's like just things like your assets. And the inventory accounts receivable, you know, that kind of flows from your income, uh, flows from your balance sheet into your income statement, right? So whatever was in your, uh, your assets should kind of reflect in the gross, uh, gross revenue. So you add all that, all those lines together to get your gross revenue. Uh, that's basically all the money you've made without any cost of goods sold or any operating expenses. So that's just the total money you made. A lot of times people say, oh, what's your gross revenue for a business, right? Like, oh, I made five million this year. Say, okay, you made five million gross, but you know, 
gross doesn't account for everything you spent to make that $5 million. So you can say $5 million, wow, that's great. But you look at the cash flow, the balance sheet, things like that, and it's like, okay, you actually don't really, <laughs> you actually didn't really make that much profit. Um, so, you know, doing all that, you get your gross revenue, and then you have to you know, manage your expenses. Uh, so things like um, your inventory, uh, repair maintenance costs, cost of labor, uh, feed if you're doing like uh, doing animals. Uh, and then plus your depreciation would be down here as well. So you would add that all that all that stuff together to get your operating expense. A lot of times operating expenses are more um, some of them are pretty fixed, some of them are variable, so you just gotta look out for that. Um, you also want to count interest. This is a new thing with accounting, it's called EBITDA, E B I T D A. And that's basically like uh, interest earning, uh, interest tax dividends, things like that. Uh, it's kind of a new concept. I haven't really used it that much or understood it that much. But basically, you want to count how much interest you're paying, how much tax you're paying. And so you always want to count that into your expenses just to uh, have a more accurate picture of what your finances are looking like. Um, so what you would do to find a net income so like I was saying earlier, some of you would be making $5 million in gross revenue, but maybe their expenses is $4 million. It's a bit left for just a million dollars. It's not, it's a bit, still a million dollars, but it's not as much as what they made it out to see. Um, so you do all that, you, you take your gross revenue minus all your expenses, um, you come up with your, any, any interest and taxes and stuff like that, you come up with your, your net income. Um, don't ask me about capital gains, I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, taxes would be here too. Uh, so you would, okay, so the interest, you should check the interest to get your net income from operations. And you should check capital gains, losses, and your taxes to get your net income. Uh, so L plus M minus N is zero your net income. These are basically just the formulas uh, that you should be using to uh, keep track of your, your finances. So there's no numbers here because everybody's going to be different. Uh, we just wanted to show you how you would kind of figure things out and, and respect them yourself and using some of these formulas. Okay. So the income statement, like I said, it doesn't show the whole picture uh, of your company's financial health. Like I said, you're making five million dollars of gross. Your 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 operating costs could be above that or just below that line. So you're not actually making too that much. Uh, so your balance sheet reports is on your assets, liabilities, equity. Uh, your statement of cash flow reports on cash movement. So. Special, it's important to note here that the income statement says nothing about when the company receives cash and how much it has cash on hand. Uh, so, just reinforcing the statement that you know, the income statement doesn't show everything about business. Uh, or, yep. So, the income statement puts on marketing and activities. Okay, so yeah, the income statement basically is just telling, telling us um, how much you're actually making, you know, how much you're, you're selling, right, if you're making from that. So it's, I'm surprised there's not a line on here. Usually on the income statement, there's a line under, um, usually there's a line for cost of goods sold, and that is basically how much you need to spend to be able to make that money. Uh, usually that's in the income statement. Um, yeah, so like this part here, you're, you're, what is sold in that period minus the cost uh, to make whatever you sell. So if you're growing tomatoes or potatoes, you would count whatever you, you use to be able to make the final sale. So things like your boxes, you would count that as your cost of goods sold. Uh, your seeds, uh, Fertilizer is kind of variable, it's kind of hard to determine, but if you kind of spread evenly, 
you're fertilizing even into the field, then you have a better idea of how much you're actually using. But not everybody does little things, things a little thing. People do things a little differently, but it's just good to keep record of that, how much you're actually spending, so you have a good idea about that. Um, so this kind of gives you how much uh, you made minus cost, the, the cost that you needed to make that money uh, minus the general, uh, some of the general expenses for the period. So that's things like um, general operating expenses, like how much you pay a month for your land, uh, how much you pay a month for transportation costs, things like that. So basically, you want to you want to figure out what your income is for that period. So let's just say it's a month, right? Uh, for the so you want to figure out for one month how much did you make, how much did you spend to make that money, how much you have to spend in general just to keep your business running, and that is your income for that month. Basic equation for a month, quarter, year, depending on how how you're uh, keeping track of your records. I recommend doing it in a month cause, just because it's a little easier to keep track of. Um, and it's good general uh, accounting practices. Uh, but like I said before, sales minus cost and expenses to income. Um, so we'll take a look at this income statement. Um, you know, you want to see how much you're getting in month to month, right? So your, your sales, let's say month one, you made $500. Cost of goods sold, you needed to spend two hundred dollars to make that five hundred dollars. That means your gross profit is three hundred dollars. Um, so you want to do that for every month. Uh, fixed expenses. So let's say you rent land, or yep, let's say fixed expenses that you rent land. Every month you're going to be uh, spending hundred dollars. So that's going to be uh, all the way across the board. Your cost of goods sold um, could be things like uh, if you need to rent a farmer's market booth or something like that, you know, that would go into your cost of goods sold because um, it's going it's, it's, it's gonna to be kind of variable depending year to year. And so if you look at month two, we made $600 this month. Our cost of goods sold went up a little bit, two fifty. dollars That's expected and the cost of goods sold and your sales should kind of grow proportionally. Because the more you make, the more you have to spend to be able to make that money. Um, so that leaves you with $350 your gross profit. And your fixed expense went up a little bit you know, to the 120 So uh, you're left with 230 at the end of the month. Uh, so how can your fixed expenses increase like that? Anybody have any ideas? So let's say, you know, you had to get an, uh, another phone line or something like that. So then you have to add that into your fixed expense because you're gonna be seeing, paying that same amount every month. Uh, so month three, kind of same concept. You're making $750, uh, but you spent 350 to be able to make that. Uh, maybe you were 400, you might have added something else. Maybe you uh, wanted to add a sound system or something, I don't know. Um, that would actually not go into your fixed expense, I'm sorry. Uh, but let's say you just add another phone line or whatever, it would be you know 130 and your net profit would be 270. And so this next part is kind of confusing, looks a little bit messy, but this is how your income statement, your balance sheet, your cash flow, or your uh, your profit and loss, how they all kind of fit together. Um, so I'll try to walk through this. Bear with me. Ask some questions if you have any. Um, Do we have a handout? Can no. you see it better? Yeah. Sorry, I don't have the handout for this. Um, but it's, it's just basically, you just, uh, I just want you guys to understand the concept of how these things work. Um, so your income statement is the first of well, I think first you want to look at your, yeah, your income statement. Um, the net income from your income statement uh, would go would flow into your cash flow statement. So that's how much cash you would have in the beginning of the period. So let's say it's a month. Beginning of the month, uh, your net your in, your net income minus all the expensive cost of goods sold, um, interest things like that. You're left with thirteen thousand seven hundred twenty-five. 
that number should be the same over here in your cash flow statement and in your net income for that month. Um, that plus all your depreciation, uh, investment activities, prime uh, financing stuff. So basically, this is your, your profit and loss statement, your cash flow statement. Uh, it shows that you made 13000 as your net income plus all this other stuff, and then leaves you with the ending cash of 35000 So that should flow into your balance sheet and your cash and equipment up here. So in your assets, you should show all of the, whatever money you made in the current month should show into your balance sheet. Right? Uh, plus your accounts receivable, inventory, all those things. Um, so in the end, your balance sheet should always uh, be balanced. Like you don't want it to be a negative number. It should be a positive number. But you want to make sure that all these things are flowing well together. So if they don't, then you're not you're really actually having an accurate picture of your of your business. Um, then down here, uh, it's fifteen thousand dollars here. Return uh, retained earnings. Um, so that's everything for your beginning uh, retained earnings. Uh, plus your net income, so uh, your net income from the from the income statement goes down here, minus any dividends you might have. I'm not sure where the dividends are, but but basically you want to make sure that these things are flowing well together to get a better uh, better picture of your uh, your financial situation. Uh, I know this is confusing. I always had a hard time kind of understanding this too, um, so please bear with me. Um, so we're going to try to look at an example of some income statements versus cash flow. Um, so we're saying here, for the month one, we made five hundred dollars. You know, this is from the last uh, couple of slides ago. Uh, we made five hundred dollars net profit of two hundred, right? But in the cash flow, it will show us that in month one, we had a beginning amount of $1,000 in the bank. Uh, you have cash in of $500, yep, your cash sales, it shows right here. Cash out, $300, yep, your um, $300, you cash out. Basically, that's your cost of goods sold, plus your fixed expenses. So every, anything you pay that's in that period will go into your cash out. Uh, so your net on your 200 your net profit, so it should show that now you're ending with $1,200. Um, so you go to the next month, and month two, you start with that money, you start with $1,200, and then you made $600 that month, yep, it shows. Cash out is $400, so it's, it's $400 here. If you look at cost of goods sold, it's $250 here, and then $120 here. So that doesn't equal $400. That's 370, so what happened to the $30? Any ideas what could have happened? Well, there could have been an accounting error in the cash out. That could have been it, something innocent maybe. Um, could be something more sinister if you're not, you don't trust the person you're working with. Um, but yeah, if there's any discrepancies like that, you really want to check that out, figure out what's going on there. Uh, maybe you spent an extra thirty dollars on gas or something that you forgot to uh, account for. Uh, so you just want to—that's why I'm stressing you do this every month so that you, have, you can always reconcile your accounts and figure out, you know, if you're losing money somewhere or you didn't know. Um, so that will it'll show there. Um, right. So it's supposed to be fifty. 2.30 a month to. So yeah, it's already starting to look a little funky because you're supposed to have 2.30 here. Your net cash uh, in is only 200, so you know it's already getting a little funky in the numbers. So that's why I'm saying you gotta write this out every month uh, to really make the most of your income statements. Yep, so we can look at month three, two, uh, three as well. Uh, it says here we made 750 in month three, but cash in only, only over here it only shows 700. So there's some, some errors there already, you can tell. Um, 
cash out is 450, but we'll take a look at uh, your cogs, your cost of goods sold. Uh, it's already 350, and fixed expense has gone up to 130, so uh, that doesn't equal 450, that's 480. Uh, right, so you're still making 270 only. But down here, there's already the counts of errors. You want to really want to make sure that you're keeping track of these. Another thing to note, I wanted to make sure uh, uh, you guys understand is fixed expenses. A lot of times businesses fail because they have, they accrue a lot of fixed expenses. And those, you know, no matter what, if you're operating or not, you're gonna have to pay that anyways. And so a lot of people make that mistake, and, you know, they buy a building or something before they can afford it. Um, they're stuck with that. And if they're not operating during the winter, things like that, you're still paying for it. And if you're cash, you haven't made enough, enough cash during this uh, growing season, and you can't pay for those months. And so uh, that's how a lot of businesses fail. They, they, they keep these big fixed expenses. Um, so just watch out for that. So more on the cash flow statement uh, or your, your, your profit and loss. It tracks the cash flow, your, your cash movement throughout a period of time. Um, just like a check, tra uh, check register records all balance transactions, everything you've made, any checks you've deposited versus everything you've withdrawn and paid out. Um, cash is king. Just wanted to reinforce that. Cash is liquid. Cash is king. It's what makes uh, companies run. Uh, so you want to make sure your your uh, your cash on hand is at a, a level that's enough for you to work with. Uh, throughout the months. So your cash flow, again, uh, shows your cash on hand, the start of the period. So, so we're doing, we're going by months, so your cash on hand uh, is at the start of a month, plus the cash you received in that month, minus you, what you spent uh, to make that cash, uh, equals how much you have at the end of the period. Um, a lot of times it's you know, just simple math, but it's just understanding the concept of it that's uh, the harder part. Alright. This gets into uh, breaking even. How do you know how do you know when you recoup everything you put in? How how do you know when you break what your breaking even point is? Let's pass that around. Uh, it's a little worksheet. We'll work with it together. Uh, I got some examples for us to work with uh, to kind of give you a better understanding of how to use this formula. So break even analysis is probably one of the most useful tools that you perform. I've always tried to do this with every person I've worked with is to try to figure out you know, when are you going to break even, when are you actually going to start profiting. I think a lot of people don't do this. And so they just say, oh yeah, I'm making money, so I'm okay. But they, have, they don't know when the, the, they actually paid off all the debt or paid off or paid themselves back for the investment they put into the business. Um, so yeah, like I said, it tells you when you're, uh, you start making more money than what you've spent. Uh, you need to do the break even analysis to calculate uh, the amount of volume, so amount of things you need to sell or amount of land you need to work with to be able to achieve that break even point. Um, yep. And then this also goes into not just volume of how much you need to sell, but you can also help users to determine at what price you need to sell that to achieve that goal. Um, and it helps you to make smart choices. The more you understand uh, your financial picture in your business, the better you uh, have, better chance you have at succeeding in your business. Uh, so let's look at the break even uh, calculations for volume. So what we're looking for is basically uh, how much you need to sell. So, so yeah, you're basically what you want to look at is your overhead expense uh, divided by your price per unit minus any variable expenses that you, that you need to spend for that unit. Uh, so just a little bit about overhead expenses. Uh, that's everything, all the cost that does not 
uh, vary based on your production level. Uh, that means your land rent, if you're, you're renting a, a, a cooler, or you're renting some uh, uh, equipment and things like that, that would be over expense. Uh, so yeah, it's always referred, sometimes referred to as a fixed expense. So yeah, insurance, rent, taxes, living expenses, things like that, that goes into your overhead, your overhead. Um, so that's kind of how you calculate your overhead. So one of the examples that, that Jake did is that, let's say the cost of running your farm, your overhead expenses are $40,000 a year. Uh, and we're gonna be looking at the volume, so that's the first portion of the break-even analysis. So let's say your overhead expenses are $40,000, uh, that includes your living expenses, farm maintenance expenses, mortgage, machine labor, marketing, other stuff. Uh, and then each acre of your farm uh, costs 2000 per year. And that acre is projected to produce $5,000 worth of produce. So what you do is take your overhead expense divided by price per unit minus variable expense. So that's, um, and keep note, you want to always have units in the, in the bottom portion of it. Whatever unit that is, whether it's acres, busher, bushels, pounds, or miles, whatever it is, uh, just keep it constant for both units. So that's $40,000 minus, uh, divided by 5,000 minus 2,000, that's 40,000 divided by uh, 3,000, so that's, you would need 13.33 acres to be able to make 40,000, to break even, essentially. Uh, and that's making $5,000 per acre that costs you 2,000 to rent. Do you have a question, Laura? I was gonna ask you what those numbers were again. So $5,000 an acre is the gross, or is that the net? Um, that's the gross. That's the gross, yeah. Yep. Do you, like, how do you calculate though, sorry, like how would you calculate, because obviously if you're going to grow more acres, mm -hmm. your costs are going to change, you know what I mean? Right. Does that, is that taken into account? Wait, can you say that again? Well, like, at, I don't know, maybe I should let you continue. I think I'm just getting confused. Yeah, well, I have another example. Um, for us, it's a little bit lower numbers, and uh, I mean, I'm working with bushels, so. Okay, so let's, let's do this little worksheet together. So let's say that we're growing tomatoes, and our overhead price is $2,000. So that's everything from your land rent, um, your uh, taxes, fees, things like that, insurance. So let's say this is 2000 up here, and your price per unit, let's say you could sell a bushel of tomatoes for five dollars. Just throwing an example out there. You make it five you can sell your, your tomatoes at five five dollars per bushel. Um, to be able to make one bushel, you spend two dollars. So what you would do is uh, five dollars minus two dollars, basically the same thing, and this will be three dollars minus two uh, so it'll be two thousand. 2,000 divided by 3. Yep, 2,000 divided by 3. Uh, you, you do that math, you're left with 667. So what that tells me is that to be able to break even with my overhead, you know, assuming we're only growing tomatoes, that you need to sell 667 bushels of tomatoes to be able to make your, uh, to be able to break even. Um, and then on the worksheet you see in the, the last line of the first section, it says upper limit or output capacity. That's basically how much you are able to do with what you have. Uh, so let's say you need to make, you need to sell at least six, 670, we're going to round it up. Let's say you need to make 670 to break even, but on your farm you're able to produce 900, uh, then you know that everything after you, after 670 bushels is all profit. Um, so this is to understand volume. So that's how much land you might need to be able to recoup your loss or how much 
of an item you need to sell to be able to recoup uh, your, your, your overhead expense for that period. Do you recommend doing this for, um, for your whole farm or for each item? Good question. So I talked to Jake about this, and he said it really depends on how much work you want to put into it. Because if you do it by, if you're working on a quarter acre, you know, at MFA, then you have to measure out. Uh, yeah, and so that can, can get really complicated. So you could just do it for your whole farm. Let's say if you're going to, uh, if you're selling at farmers market, and on average you can sell a little something for like two, three dollars, then let's just put two dollars as an average price that you can get from a farmers market. Oh, per unit, though. It could be any food. Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So you could do it. For Per, uh, for your whole farm, you know, instead of each item individually. Although if you really want to get complicated, you can do it each item individually to, sh to, to know how much of each item you need to sell. Um, I would say based on like, what I've done on the purchase form, just based on score feet per bag, and you have to write your value of your crop and how many pounds per bag, then you can calculate cost of production. That's why I think on the first one. Yeah. So you're saying do this for the items you're actually making a lot of money? Yeah. Very well. Just sell for all items. Mm hmm. Right, right. So, yeah, so if you do it for all items, you know which one you're actually making the most money with, right? So you can start specializing in that and growing that market instead of doing. Ten different things. Right? If you're renting, your rent would be a variable expense, right? In this calculation, because your overhead could include your rent, so that would change depending on how many acres you have. Uh, I would count rent as an overhead expense as a fixed, because your rent is not going to change month to month unless you're like changing how many acres you want to do every month. Generally, you know, if you're only farming an acre, then you just want to count that as a fixed expense because everyone's going to pay the same amount. Or if you're only paying like half every five months or so, then you can like split that, uh, divide that up, and count that for your, your overhead expense. And so, like I was saying, this is just for this scenario is for volume, or this equation is for volume. So. How much do you need to sell? Or how much land do you need to be able to achieve that uh, break even? Um, the next part uh, is the break even price. Um, so that's how much you need to sell at to be able to achieve to, to reach break even. Uh, so that will be overhead expense plus your variable expense. Uh, so that's everything, every input you you, you add into your uh, tomatoes to be able to make money. So all of that divided by the overhead expense. So in this example, you use the same figures, uh, but let's say you can only manage nine acres total. You know, you're only able to do nine acres, not 13 acres like the, like this, like the example before. Uh, so variable expenses for nine acres. Well, what we want to do is figure out how much price to charge if you're only able to farm nine acres. Uh, and, and you still needed to hit that uh, overhead cost, right? So your variable, let's just say your variable expense for nine acres will cost you 24000 So in this example, you know, your overhead expense is still the same, 40000 Your variable expenses for those nine acres is 24000 So you add those together, divide it by 40000 so that's 64000 divided by 40000 that leaves you with $1.60. 160. So that's how much, uh, uh, what is it? That's how much you should be charging for whatever you're throwing to be able to uh, reach your break even point. So, in, a, in, a, in another example uh, with the one that I did personally with tomatoes, so let's say for tomatoes, your overhead cost is at $2,000. Uh, Let's just say to be able to produce uh, one unit, let's just say one, 
one pound of tomatoes cost you two dollars uh, to make, then what you what it will end up being is you add those two together. So two thousand and two divided by two thousand that leaves you with basically a dollar. So you would need to sell at a dollar uh, a pound to be able to get your overhead to be able to uh, break even, basically. So this is really good if you wanted to uh, analyze each copy individually. Um, yeah. But, and again, with these examples, we're really looking at if you're just growing one item. So I know a lot of farmers are growing different items in one or two acres or less. So it's a little bit harder to do that. Um, but this is just assuming you're just growing one acre. So yeah, like, like we were saying, if you have multiple products, uh, you just have two options. You can look at uh, enterprise individually. So that would mean um, like if you were selling to CSAs, if you were selling to farmers markets, things like that, you can analyze that individually. Or you can just look at the cost of your whole farm as a whole. Um, it really depends on how, how you want to do it and what you want to see. Um, but those are some of the equations that we've been using to help you uh, kind of get a better understanding of those things. Oh, that was it. Any questions, any discussions? I know I kind of ran through this pretty fast. Uh, I wish I had more examples to show you guys, but it's kind of last minute to take, take that six. So, um, yeah, well, you know, I know I don't have the accounting experience to kind of answer a lot of the uh, in depth question. I didn't want to get in depth because uh, we're not, I'm not an accountant, it's not an accounting class. So I just wanted to help you guys kind of get the basic understanding and the formulas to kind of help you out. Uh, I have here actually something pretty cool that Jake showed me. I hope that you guys might be able to use it. Um, but just give me a second here. Veggie compass. Have you guys heard of the veggie compass? Okay, let me show this to you guys. Uh, just pull it up real quick. And I've, I've sent these to Laura, so you guys can hopefully download it from uh, the Dropbox or something. Oh, here you go. But yeah, this thing has literally everything you need to kind of keep track of your farm records. Uh, oh, this is Excel doc, so you can from Veggie Compass. It's a, I think it's a whole organization. So yeah, here we go. So Farm Pro yeah, I mean, I've, I've sent the link to Laura too, so it should be in the Dropbox or Drive or something. Yeah. Uh, so you guys can have access to this. Um, you know, play around with it, figure it out. Uh, I haven't used it at all, but I looked through it quickly and it's really, really comprehensive. It has all the information you could not have about the uh, Veggie Compass. Um, a lot of things down here, and then the, thank God they have a user manual. I know Excel, Excel spreadsheets can get pretty intimidating sometimes, uh, so they've actually added a table of contents user manual. This is great. So you can it, it's really step by step. You do step one, your expense input, everything that you oh funky. So all your wages, anything you have to pay, you know, whether that's, uh, if you have an account, a CPA or something, you would want to add that in here. Uh, any labor you have, you know, employee benefits, payroll taxes. I know a lot of people won't have like the numbers to this or won't have all of these categories. And that's totally fine. You just fill out whatever you have. Uh, yep. So yeah, first enter, well, you just 
They have your sales input. Oh, this is cool. They do it by uh, by market. So your CSA, farmers markets, wholesales. If you have a farm stand for uh, by any chance, you know, uh, it automatically updates over here, so you know how much you're making per per market. Um, so you can also kind of use this as a tracker. Every every month, you know, update this stuff, or every time you go to a market, update it. Uh, every time you put in crops, you know, whatever uh, seed cost, uh, number of plants, greenhouse, square footage. Uh, yeah, cost of production by crop. So this actually could probably give you a really accurate. Uh, break even analysis here. So this is if you really want to get technical, you, really, you want to spend the time to really get it right, I would really suggest using this. Um, otherwise, you can just use spreadsheets and do it, or other spreadsheets to do it, and it's just, as, it's just as good. I have other forms that I'll send to Laura uh, to give you guys. It's not going to be, it's not as intimidating as this, and it's not farm specific, but you can change the categories to uh, what you need it to be. Um, so yeah, sales output, it generates a profit and loss. So this thing, yeah, look, the, the, they have all the formulas up there already. So you don't have to fill out anything else. If you've entered any information in the other slides, it should automatically populate to show you how much you're making per uh, per uh, market here. Is it a download? Uh, no, free download, I think. I mean, this is, I, I have I got this from Jake and. Uh, it's an Excel spreadsheet, so you just download it and use it yourself. You know, I know there's other like programs out there you, where you have to pay for, which is great and all, but if you're able to do it yourself, you know, you won't ever have to pay anybody to do your accounting for you. And that's less of a cost uh, up front for you. you know? uh, but yeah, I wanted to show you guys this uh, because I think it's going to be a great tool for all the beginning farmers to kind of just. Uh, get accustomed to kind of keeping records, right? Because we, we, we stress in the early class that record keeping is super important. I think this is a great way to kind of keep your records as well. And then, um, you know, if you, have, if you guys have more questions regarding um, any accounting practices or trying to figure out uh, what categories things go in, you know, feel free to give Jake a call or shoot him an email. You know, he's always willing and available to just even uh... yeah. There we go. So that's Jake's information. If you guys want to take that down, he's a good. He's a great. Um, he's been a great resource for me. He taught me a lot about the, uh, the financial documents and stuff like that. Uh, he got me to understand the basic concepts and understanding of things, and so. Um, yeah, just tell them you're with MFA, or you're with, you know, you took the classes and uh, you want to ask him a couple questions. I'm sure he won't charge you for, for asking a couple questions. And he's, uh, yeah, he's great to work with. So.